Good evening, young adults. How y'all doing? Happy Resurrection or Happy Easter weekend. There we go. There we go. Uh, I just want to say I want to welcome you guys um, watching online and those of you in the church tonight. I'm just going to say a quick prayer before uh, we begin. Heavenly Father, I thank you for each person here tonight. Lord, I thank you also that your son has risen from the grave, Lord. Lord, it didn't end in the tomb, Lord. That was only the beginning. So, Lord, I just pray for every person here. And, Lord, uh, I bless those who are going to get baptized tonight. May you bless them in Jesus' name. Amen. I want to read to you guys uh, Matthew 28, verse 5. It says, The angel said to the woman, Do not be alarmed and frightened, for I know that you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He is not here. He has risen as he said he would do. Come and see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples he has risen from the dead. And behold, he is going before you to Galilee. There you will see him. Behold, I have told you. So they left the tomb with fear and great joy and ran to tell the disciples. And as they went, behold, Jesus met them and said, Hail, greetings. And they went up to him and clasped his feet and worshiped him. Then Jesus said to them, do not be alarmed or afraid. Go and tell my brethren to go into Galilee and they will see me there as well. Um, earlier I was praying and the Lord gave me this revelation. Sunday is coming. Jesus is too. You've been what you've been believing for, what you've been praying for is gonna come alive. And you're gonna be so thankful to Jesus because your sins are gone and you've been made new. Happy Easter weekend. Let us worship. Amen. All right, well, uh, we're excited to worship with y'all tonight. Um, I was just thinking today about the scripture uh, that's, that's really fitting for this weekend. Um, 1 Corinthians 15, uh, Paul, he summarizes the gospel there. He says that, uh, I remind you the gospel uh, which which was delivered to me, that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, that he was buried, and that he was raised on the third day according to the scriptures. So uh, I've just been meditating on it. I just invite y'all to meditate on the fact that the good news, it's not what, it's not like a list of things that we have to do to get right with God, but rather it's, it's the announcement of what God has done to make us right with himself. And so let's just, let's rest in God tonight. Let's trust in him. Let's worship him and the freedom and joy that we have because of what he has done for us. This song is called Joy in the House of the Lord. Let's sing it, you know it. of the Lord tonight. Let's sing. We sing to the God who was. We sing to the God who was. We sing to the God who is. We sing to the God who evermore will be. He opened the, he opened the prison doors. He parted the raging sea. Our God, He holds the victory. There's joy. Let's sing. And there's joy of the Lord, and there's joy in the house of the Lord today, and we won't be quiet, and we shout out your praise, there's joy in the house of the Lord, and our God is surely in this place, and we won't be quiet, and we shout out your praise, come on, shout to him, oh, 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 we shout out your God who heals, we sing to the God who saves, we sing to the God who always makes a way. Here's what he did. Cause he hung upon that cross, and he rose up from that grave. Our God is still rolling stones away. And there's joy in the house of the Lord, there's joy in the house of the Lord today. But now we're royalty, 
that we think, uh, so many things that we think if we do, we'll experience pleasures, sinful things, unrighteous things, things of this world, God, but the truth is, is that all of the joy, all the pleasures that, that we could ever experience are actually in your presence, Lord. Lord, would you give us hearts that long to seek your presence continually? All right, let's sing this. He's coming on the clouds. Oh, and he's coming on the clouds. And kings and kingdoms will bow down. And every chain will break as broken hearts declare his praise. But who can stop the Lord Almighty? And our God is the lion. Power in fighting our battles, every knee will bow before Him. Our God is the Lamb, the Lamb that was slain for the sins of the world, and His blood breaks the chains. Every knee will bow before the Lion and the Lamb. Way before the King of Kings. Our God has come to save. Our God has come to save. He's here tonight to set the captives free. But who can stop the Lord Almighty? And our God is the Lion, the Lion of Judah. He's roaring with power and fighting our battle. the Lord. Who can stop the Lord Almighty? Who can stop the Lord Almighty? Who can stop the Lord Almighty? Who can stop? Come on, we sing that together. Who can stop? Stop the Lord. We sing again. Who can stop the Lord? Who can stop the Lord? Almighty. 
you have reconciled us by sending your son Jesus, Lord.
Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for your presence. Thank you, oh, how we worship you, how we adore you, how we hallow your great name. It is a privilege and honor to stand before you, Jesus, and make this all about you. We must increase you and decrease ourselves. We just stand before you in awe. We give you praise and we glorify you. We behold you. So just take a moment and reflect on what we are anticipating. What we are reading about and listening to and, and experiencing in these services this, this holy week. I thank you, Father. We stand humbly before you and we praise you. We acknowledge you, Jesus. Oh, help us never to take for granted that great sacrifice that we can't even fathom because of the love that you have for your people, whether they've accepted you or, or have not accepted you. You still gave it all for us. Oh, thank you, Jesus. And we know that the word says in Psalm 100 and make a joyful no noise to the Lord all you lands serve the Lord with gladness and come before his presence with singing no perceive recognize and understand with approval that the Lord is God it is he who has made us not we ourselves and we are and we are his, we are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and a thank offering and into his courts with praise. Be thankful and say to him, bless and affectionately praise his name for the Lord is good. His mercy and loving kindness and everlasting. His faithfulness and truth endure for all generations. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. We do inhabit your praises. We hallow your great name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. We thank you, Lord. We stay here, stand here and reflect and we know with this as our Saturday service what a blessing it is to come together and be able to pray with one another and to encourage and lift one another up to praise the lord when two or more are gathered he is in our presence right amen hallelujah hallelujah in matthew 27 Verse 62, it says, the next day, that is, the day after the day of preparation for the Sabbath, the chief priests and the Pharisees assembled before Pilate. And then in verse 65, it says, Pilate said to them, you have a guard of soldiers. Take them and go. Make it as secure as you can. So they went off and made the tomb secure by sealing the boulder, a guard of soldiers being with them and remaining to watch. In Isaiah 53, 5, it says, but he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our guilt and, in, and iniquities. The chastisement needful to obtain peace and well-being for us was upon him. And with the stripes that wounded him, we are healed and made whole. Let's listen to that again. And by the stripes that he was wounded with, and that wounded him, we are healed and made whole. Oh, hallelujah. Praise the Lord. <laughs> that should bring you blessed assurance right there. We know the promise. You know, even in the word of God, it says that um, the, the ones that 
that went and were, they stood before Pilate. And he said, make sure that that is sealed. Make sure. Because there was fear. There was fear because they knew. They knew. And they were scared about what, would, what could happen. And so we need to stand in faith at all times. Be in faith and not fear, right? No matter what's going on in the world, we stand in faith and we trust in the Lord with all our hearts. We don't lean on our own understanding, but we acknowledge him in all ways and he directs our steps. So Father, I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Father. Let's begin to pray. Go ahead and take the hand of the person next to you and pray. If your family's not here, stand in as a conduit for your family members. If they're not with Jesus and in in walking by faith, call them in. We have authority and we have the, the dominion to speak out of our mouth, say to the mountains, move, right? We have the power by our voice, but we cannot remain silent. We must speak. So call your family members into the shepherd's guidance, protection. So Father, we thank you, Lord, for our family members. Lord, we thank you that you are protecting them, God, that you're bringing divine protection around our families, our homes, our properties, God, everything in our lives, Lord, we speak divine protection. Father, we thank you for the healing power that flows in us because greater is he who is in us than he who is in the world. Lord, we thank you that by your stripes we are healed. We thank you, Lord, that every member is healed by the blood of Jesus. God, I thank you that they are saved in the name of Jesus. I thank you, Father, by faith we stand for every member in our family, God. Whether they are here tonight or they're not here or are far away from you, God, we call the prodigal sons and daughters back into the shepherd's fold where they belong. God, I thank you that you awaken the hearts of our family members, Lord, of our loved ones, Father, the friends that we have, God, those who are lost, Lord, call them back in. In the name of Jesus, God, convict their hearts, Lord. Take them to their knees, Lord Jesus. Humble them, God, so that they know there's more to this life than the things of the world, God. But they are convicted that they have a desire that someone comes into their pathway that is, that is a godly woman or man, God. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus, that we can be your hands and feet, that we can extend compassion and love of the Father, that there's no condemnation, no guilt or shame, that we don't operate that way because we are different. We are the sons and daughters of the Most High, and that we too fell into sin. But we know, Lord, that you are the way, the truth, and the life, and we direct them to you, Lord, that we are not their Savior, but you are God. God, I thank you. I thank you, Lord, for restoration in our families, Lord, in our relationships, our friends, God, our neighbors, Lord, in our extended family, God, that there's no bitter root, there's no unforgiveness, God, no malice, no revengeful hearts, God. Oh, Lord, make our hearts pure before you. Cleanse us, God. Lord, I thank you for your word. I thank you, Lord, that we all come to our knees humbly before you. Lord, your word says in 2 Chronicles 7 and 14, if my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves, help us, Lord, to be humble. Help us not to have a haughty spirit, not to be prideful, not to be someone who wants to one-up on, on somebody else and, and tell them what they need to do and how they need to do it, but that we're patient, God, that we display the fruits of the Spirit, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Pray, seek, crave and require of necessity my face and turn from their wicked ways then I will hear from heaven forgive their sin and heal their land 
it takes one decision to be humble before God. And that means removing all pride. We have not arrived yet, brothers and sisters. We are to be with one another as iron sharpens iron. We can learn from so many people that are even around us in our own family if we'll just humble ourselves. We can learn from the leadership here. We can learn in our quiet time when it's just us with, with our Holy Spirit and our Bibles. We can hear prophecy from God about our lives if we'll just take the time to be with the one who created us, who's our Lord and our Savior. Father, forgive us for not humbling ourselves before you, for being prideful in our thoughts or in our deeds, or in our actions, in our words. We repent, Father. Thank you for what you did. Now, God, we stand before you and we pray for the holy city of Israel. God, I thank you that you bless the holy city. Lord, I thank you that you uproot every leader that is there or in the governmental system in that, in that region, God, that is not of kingdom order, God, that you take them out in the name of Jesus. God, I thank you that you bring confusion to the enemy's camp, Lord, where there has been evil, assignments, Lord, I thank you that you divinely reverse them. God, I thank you that you are the governmental authority of kingdom power and you're sovereign. And no matter what the government's saying that they're going to do and that they're going to change this law or change this day, God, you're sovereign. And we speak and we will stand boldly in the name of Jesus and we will pray we will pray, brothers and sisters. We will declare in the name of Jesus what God's word says. That we will not comply. That we will stand with authority that God has given us in Jesus' mighty name. Lord, I thank you that you bless Pastor Ken tonight and all the people that have been assigned to tonight in the order of this service. Holy Spirit, have your way. We Surrender every message to you and allow you to flow through these beautiful women and men of God for your glory. And everybody says, amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Monica's going to come up and lead us in communion tonight. So go ahead and prepare your elements. And if you haven't received them, just let the usher know and they'll be happy to hand it to you. So I actually had something wrote down I was going to say, but, you know, I haven't been here in two weeks, and not being here has made me realize how much I miss being here, but I've been sick. So, you know, I didn't get to come for Palm Sunday, and I was so upset about it, and I never thought in my life that I would be so upset about not being able to be at church, but I really, I was really upset that I couldn't be here. But I wanted to say that the worship team tonight did a really great job. The last song that Ashlyn sang really, it touched me a lot. But, um, you know, I was standing there thinking about, about Jesus. And when I came in, I saw this cross. And it kind of really hit me because this is the first time that I get to celebrate Easter as a Christian. It's been 10 months for me. So, you know, this is the, the first time and I'm, I'm excited about it. But I was sitting here thinking about Jesus, how... You know, they they just loved him so much, you know. He he wasn't a doctor, he didn't have medicine, he didn't have any of these things, but he was a healer. You know, he didn't have a degree, but he was a teacher, you know. They all wanted to follow him because they loved him so much. And he wasn't, he didn't have a castle, he didn't have a, a, a mansion, he didn't have, you know, this big fancy place that all these people had, but yet he was a king, you know, and they still, they just love him so much. And I saw this uh, thing today that said 70% of people believe that Jesus rose from the grave. And then I saw a video where they went around and they asked people, do you believe in Jesus Christ? And one after another said, no, no, I don't believe in Jesus Christ. No, I don't believe in Jesus Christ. And man, that really broke, you know, it touched my, it broke my heart. It upset me because, you know, 
how can people not believe in Jesus? You know, how can they not believe there's a God? I have two nephews and one of them believes in the devil, but he doesn't believe in God. And I have another that just, he believes in, in Buddha, Buddhism. He doesn't believe in God and he was raised in a church family. He doesn't believe in him at all. So when I hear these things, it upsets me so much because the stuff that Jesus went through, you know, on, on Friday, he was, he was crucified. You know, he took these lashes, these beatings, and his, his, his flesh was ripped away for us. You know, he died for us. He took that walk for us. He had people spit on him, people yelling at him, people putting him down, but he kept walking. You know, he kept going no matter what. And then he stood up on, you know, they put him up on that cross and they nailed his hands to that cross. And I don't know for sure how long he was up there. I'm, you know, I'm still learning these things, but I know he was up there for a while and it had to be hard for him. But I know his last words were his finished, right? Those were his last words. So, you know, I, I sit here and I think also about our president of the United States and he's, you know, I hope God comes to him in his sleep tonight and shows him the true meaning of Easter. Because, you know, he wants to make this a, a, a transgender thing on Easter and it upsets me. I kind of came from the, the lifestyle that, of being in the gay lifestyle and I'm upset that he thinks that he's allowed to do that because, you know, I know that God was with me this whole time throughout the years. I know he was with me. And I would cry out to him a million times. And I know that he probably answered me, but I wasn't listening. But this last time I listened and I don't know, I'm just, you know, I, it's this, this cross right here. When I came in today, I saw this. It actually, it made me realize, you know, that he died for us. But I wanted to read you something that the Holy Spirit gave me. <clears throat> it says, when Jesus rose upon that day, an angel came and transcendently rolled the stone away. He said, Mary Magdalene, walk inside. When she took that first step in, you see, she walked through a beautiful new door for you and me. Never pass up what is waiting for you. God has many doors for thee, but none like that one near Calvary. I hear you say it's a tomb, but open your eyes in the spiritual and see. Doors come in many forms for you and me. The stone is a door, the angel opened, you see, with a seal that nobody could break but me. When Mary Magdalene stepped inside, her heart was filled with fear, but then she felt the Lord was near. She began to cheer. Never forget this door, you see, it is the absolute most unparalleled door that was open for all who see and believe in me. So I'd like to go ahead and pray. Lord, I thank you, Lord for dying on the cross for my sins. I never ever thought that I could be forgiven for the things that I've done, Lord, but you have forgiven me and you have shown me so many wonderful things in dreams and poetry and visions. And I thank you for taking that walk, that hard walk that you had to take, Lord, where they beat you and they whipped you, but you kept getting up and you kept going, Lord, because you knew that's what you had to do. You had to die for our sins. So thank you, Lord, for everything that you do for all of us, for all of us, Lord. And I ask that you go and you, you bring the people to you they say it's 70%, bring the 30% in, Lord, make it 100%. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. It's your name I pray, amen. Let's go ahead and take the, the cup, body.
When we give offering, we are planting seeds. They're extension of our tithe. It's separate from our tithe. And it's a place where we become vulnerable in front of God and say, I need you in this area a little extra. These seeds are opportunities for things to grow from them, flowers, fruit, where then they can produce more seeds and not only be a blessing to us, but be a blessing to others. So before I get into my message, um, I want Tyler to come give a testimony um, about some seeds that were planted and actually gave us a blessing. So this is awesome that we get to share this with you guys because it's a, uh, an opportunity for your faith to be risen um, through the testimony. But um, we were looking, Hannah specifically, one of the desires of her heart was to receive a, a china cabinet. She got some precious china from a gift from, from the uh, shower and just from awesome people around us. And she was looking for a china cabinet. And it wasn't one of those things that we needed by any means, especially right now that we're just now getting into the house and we're a month out from marriage. But... Um, it was one of her desires. And so we found a, a, a China cabinet through Facebook. Um, Hannah's mother actually messaged the people that had it. Um, and so we went to go and look at it um, over at their house. When we got to their house, actually right before we got to their house, I realized that the people's last name was familiar, that I, we knew these people from somewhere. And then I realized after looking at their profile picture that their son um, was someone that we actually was able, we were able to bless uh, through my dad's time at the University of Louisville. Uh, uh, their son had a terminal illness and one of his dying wishes was to play soccer with the University of Louisville soccer team. And so we had a day for him where we got to celebrate him and actually we signed him to a letter of intent and it's really cool. He had, he had his little buddy Pooh Bear and, and he was probably about seven years old, six years old and he passed. Um, but when we went over to their house, uh, the two parents um, were very, very appreciative for the seed that we had sown in their lives and their son's life. Um, and in doing so, um, they gifted the China cabinet uh, to us. And it, what it is, is it's a testimony of the proof of the economy of God. When you give, that it comes back to you. And when you give at an open and a, and a kind heart and just simply to bless other people, God will supply all your needs according to his riches and glory, which goes above your understanding. So that was one of the testimonies that we are thankful to share with you guys and the blessing of God. I love China, so that's why I had to have it. And I'm always looking at my mom's China cabinet and I was like, I really want one. So just another testimony about what I had spoken on previously. Um, but keeping that testimony um, in the back of our minds, I wanna speak on the seeds that Jesus planted throughout his journey. The seeds that he planted on his path to his crucifixion. In John four, he planted the everlasting water seed and the Samaritan woman at the well. In Mark two, he planted the seed of grace as he healed and forgave the paralyzed man. In John five, he planted the seed of worthiness and healing the man at the pool. And in Matthew 5, he planted the seed of faith when he gave that Sermon on the Mount. From these moments, among many others, along his path into the crucifixion, he planted these seeds into people directly touched, but also into those indirectly touched. In the end, God gave the greatest offering that has no price on it that we could ever pay except for him, which was his only son. He gave his flesh and his blood for us. It was the greatest price, but for us, it was given, it was free. The only thing that he asked us to do is to receive it. Tyler and I didn't have to pay anything for that. We thought we did. And before Jesus was crucified, that's what we were gonna have to do. We would have to pay. But he, being the gracious God that he is, gave it to us for free. And that was something that in his parents doing that we were able to receive their, their gift from their seed. So as we give offering today, I want us to remember the greatest offering that he has given. And I want us to embody what he did, which was give it in love and give it with a cheerful heart. 
So God, I thank you for these tithes and these offerings, Lord. Lord, I thank you for this time that you have allowed us to come together the day before and you're rising, God. And God, I thank you that you are showing us each and every day where you have placed us at such a time as this to bring people closer to you, God. God, I ask that each offering and tithe that is being brought today, God, that you bless it and you give it everlasting water, worthiness, forgiveness, love, kindness, patience. God, I thank you that every seed that is planted here today will receive a harvest that goes beyond any measure that either one of us could ever think or imagine. And I thank you in Jesus' name, amen. You can bring your ties to the front and we'll collect offerings. God bless you all. Go ahead and bring those forward. Plant your seed. Lord, I thank you that they flourish abundantly. Thank you, Lord. It's so good to see everybody in the house of the Lord tonight. Amen? How many here are new... They've never been to this service before. Can you just raise your hand? Hello. <laughs> that was great to have you guys. Thanks for coming and worshiping with us and praying together. It's such a privilege and honor for us to have you here and partnering with um, the kingdom. It's so important. So uh, I see there's... There's a new one with you, Michaela. Hadley, how are you? Hadley's nine. She's here with us. I'm so glad to have you here. I loved Monica's testimony and the vulnerability that was shared with all of you tonight. That's a very courageous thing to do. Amen. And I love how the Lord is revealing poetic prophecy through her <laughs> she's receiving poems and it's just flowing in the spirit and such a beautiful gift to see that's not something I've seen before and I'm very honored to to see the Holy Spirit making it so personal for her just like the Lord does for all of us right amen there's lots of wonderful things going on here at Evangel Christian Evangel World Prayer Center and <laughs> the school as well, but <laughs> we're talking about Evangel World Prayer Center. So um, we're going to go ahead and turn our attention to the screens and see our ENN that will go over all those wonderful ways that you can plug in and participate. Hi, everyone. Welcome to Evangel. We're so glad you chose to worship with us today. We have a ton of exciting upcoming events for you and your family that you don't want to miss out on. Men, don't miss the Wednesday morning time of prayer at 6.30 a.m. with Pastor Rogers. This is a great time of prayer and fellowship and is followed with a delicious breakfast. Easter is right around the corner and we have plenty of service times for you to choose from. Our Easter services will take place March 29th through the 31st. Friday and Saturday will be at 6 p.m. and Sunday at 7, 9, and 11 a.m. We will also have Easter day water baptisms available for all that want to take that next step. What better day than Easter to make such a special commitment? We hope you and your family come to celebrate with us during this Easter season. A night to honor and pray for Israel will be on Sunday, April 7th at 5 p.m. With 130 hostages still in captivity, there's never been a more important time to pray for the people of Israel. On April 12th at 6 p.m., we will be hosting a Night of Hope, a dinner to benefit the Lord's Kitchen Ministries. This event is a celebration of our collective efforts to make a difference in our community. To purchase a ticket or sponsor a table, go to thelordskitchenministries.com. Guest speaker Mark Hankins will be with us April 14th and 15th, Sunday for all service times and Monday at 6 p.m. These will be two days of powerful ministry and encouragement. ORU Evangel is having a Get Started meeting for interested students on Monday, April 15th at 7 p.m. at Evangel North Church in Clarksville, Indiana. 
ORU Evangel offers affordable, world-class, spirit-empowered degrees, including business administration, Christian counseling, Christian leadership and ministry, and so many more. This meeting is geared towards graduating high schoolers and adults ready to fulfill God's plan by getting a degree. Scholarships will be given away during the meeting, so make plans to attend. The Evangel Prison Ministry will be holding a lady spring luncheon on Saturday, April 20th at noon in the Evangel Billtown Sanctuary. There will be a derby hat auction, delicious food, and a powerful word from guest speaker Sherry Holt. If you would like to attend or host a table, please call the Prison Ministry Office at 502-231-9100, extension 1228. Dr. Hendrick Forster will be with us on April 21st through the 23rd, Sunday for all service times, and Monday and Tuesday at 6 p.m. Dr. Vorster has planted churches in 75 nations on six continents over the past 34 years. This will be a powerful time of impartation and teaching that will equip you to build the kingdom of God. We'll see you there. To keep up with all that's happening here at Evangel, stop by the Welcome Desk, follow us on social media, or head over to our website, ewpc.com. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Jonathan, a big hand for putting all that together. We so much appreciate the back-end support of what goes on behind us and producing the online as well as the NN. So much going on. Um, Testimony-wise, uh, want to uh, ask uh, Johnny if uh, Johnny's in the back doing some cameras, if he can come forward as I uh, st start uh, talking about a, a testimony in, um, in our family. It's been a busy uh, for Tina and I, it's been a, a, a busy year. Um, uh, Christiana got married last May, uh, found out recently uh, that she is um, pregnant and having a little girl, so we're excited about that. Yes. Our first grandchild. And then uh, Tyler and Hannah get married next month, less than a month away, so we're excited about that moving in. And just recently, come on, Johnny, come forward. Just recently, Johnny and Isabella, our niece, got engaged. So we just want, so come forward. Um, uh, I'm, I'm hoping Joe will be back. Is he Joe around? We wanted him to come forward. Joe, if you're in, in, in uh, can hear, uh, have a sprint in this direction. And then Troy and Alicia, if you guys can come forward. Um, we'd love for you to come forward and um, just say a prayer over Lisa. You can come and um, please come forward and, and just say a prayer over uh, Johnny and Isabella. Father, I thank you so much for the gracious work that you have been pouring out and accomplishing in Johnny's life, God. I talked to him earlier, Lord, that uh, his ability, his athletic abilities, God, as, as I was able to see a couple weeks ago, Lord, are from you. God, you've been gracious to him uh, in the physical, but also in the spiritual, God, as I understand. You've, you've saved him, Lord. You've, you've, you've given him purpose, God, a purpose that you set forth before the ages began. Lord, would you, um, would you bless uh, him and, and his, uh, the future marriage that they're about to uh, walk into, God? Lord, what you bring together, let not man separate, God. I ask that, that you would give divine purpose and that you would communicate that purpose clearly to them as uh, not just what they're to do uh, as individuals, but what they are to do as a, as a couple in your kingdom, as laborers uh, in your kingdom, God, that your spirit would bind them together so strongly, Lord, that, that they would sharpen one another as as iron sharpens iron, God. And even though, though you know, there's times where that doesn't feel good, but but it's it, it's ultimately working for for the good, Lord. And so I just thank you for your plan for their lives, God, and for the gracious work you've already done and what you're going to continue to do and bring to completion. Thank you, Lord. Oh, okay. Um, yes, God, I just come in agreement with everything that Troy just said. Lord, I ask that you would bless them. God, I, I speak the favor of God upon them even, even now, Lord. I pray that you would send amazing people in their life to show them um, the best examples. God, I pray that you would send them um, awesome friends. God, I pray that you would give them favor in the workplace. 
I ask that you would give them favor as they prepare, um, you know, where they're going to live, Lord, just for their future. God, I pray that you would give them favor in every step that they take, um, Lord, and that you would show them, God, that you love them. Um, Amen. Tina and I are so encouraged because of their walk spiritually, of what's going on in their lives. Um, uh, they've been pursuing the Lord um, separately uh, in their own lives, seeking the Lord. And um, that has us most encouraged about their relationship together because it is centered in the Lord. So I appreciate you praying over them um, and the blessings. We believe they've already um, have been shown the favor of God in their life. So we're so excited for them. Uh, anybody new here? I see some new faces, but first, first time to Evangel or Saturday night service? Anybody? All right. Welcome, welcome, yeah, kind of welcome, welcome. Thank you so much. We appreciate you being part of our service and welcome here. Tina and I have always said this, this, this is our family. It's an extension of our family. Um, we so much appreciate uh, not only Evangel, but the Saturday night service and the people that come. We've, we've developed um, um, uh, somewhat of a, a f- not somewhat, but definitely a family in the Saturday night service that as we come together, um, fellowship and, and live in life together, Tina and I are so grateful for this service and the opportunity to pastor not only the young adults, but the young at heart as well. Uh, so everybody here uh, qualifies. So um, Tina and I, after this service, um, though tonight are going to make a, a quick dash because the Hispanic service that is run uh, by Evangel asked us to uh, preach tonight there as well. So at the end of tonight's service, we're going to uh, dash. Um, so we're not going to be able to f- uh, fellowship with everybody, uh, give you a quick hug on the way out. But um, they're expecting us uh, later on tonight. So we're excited about sharing with the Hispanic uh, service as well tonight. We have the baptismal founts open tonight. And we've, we uh, announced it uh, publicly. Anybody here have a desire to get, and listen, we have towels. So even if you didn't have a change of clothes, just consider being baptized. Anybody have any intentions tonight? We want to, at the end of the service, leave room in the service for baptisms. Um, and they're doing them tomorrow, as you saw on the, um, on the announcements, that a, a Sunday service, at the end of the service, they're doing baptisms. What a, what a perfect time. What a, what a great time for a rebirth, a restart, a renewal. And Pastor Bob's always said this. It doesn't have to be a first-time uh, event for you. That, that in our lives, a recommitment to the Lord of uh, being baptized. So it, it doesn't have to be just a one-time event. Uh, not too long ago, Pastor Bob was, was baptized after a service. And he baptized and brought him up. He said, go again. So he baptized him and brought him up again. So... We, we all need to be cleaned. We, we all need a cleaning on a regular basis. Tyler, um, Tyler told a, a story recently, and I hope you don't mind me uh, telling. He moved into a, a new house, closed it, and... Um, had a challenge with the the house in that the shower in the master bedroom wasn't draining. So he was in the shower showering and the water was was coming up as in he he obviously said it was a quick shower because uh, the water was coming up and he said as the water was coming up it being dirty that he didn't want to stand in there too long. And the Lord was talking to him about about how people being cleansed but don't step out of the dirty water. That we, we baptize but stepping out of the dirty water. 
that we are cleansed. And sometimes I believe in our lives that we, we get comfortable in the dirty water. That we want to be cleansed, but, but aren't, aren't ready to completely submit to step out of the dirty water. And, and I believe I, I didn't expect to go there tonight, but I believe that the message tonight, the resurrection message tonight, is, is about stepping out in a way and living in a way that we are recreated, renewed, restored, free. I, I, I so much appreciate how the, how the Lord works as well in the service. There are um, obviously in preparation for Resurrection Sunday tomorrow, there's a lot of passages I could read from. And all four of the Gospels, they all um, have passages about the resurrection of Jesus. But I was reading on uh, Matthew and what does... Uh, Judah, who did an awesome job tonight in the opening prayer. What does he open up to Judah? He, he opens up to Matthew 28. Tina, what does she open up to Matthew 27? So I'm going to start by reading out of Matthew 28. And if you just open your Bibles, we're going to start in Matthew 28, 1. And Lord, I thank you for your word. Lord, I thank you for the testimony. Lord, that we get to read about, participate in, claim your word about your son dying on a cross and rising on a third day. Lord, I thank you for this message tonight. Lord, I thank you for what you put on my heart. Lord, I thank you that this message go forth and plant seeds that bear great fruit. I thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, after the Sabbath, as the first day of the week began to dawn, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary came to see the tomb. And behold, there was a great earthquake. For an angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone from the door and sat on it. His countenance was like lightning and his clothing as white as snow. And the guards shook for fear of him and became like dead men. But the angel answered and said to the woman, Do not be afraid, for I know that you seek Jesus who was crucified. He is not here, for he is risen, as he said. Come, see the place where the Lord lay. And go quickly and tell his disciples that he is risen from the dead. And indeed, he is going before you into Galilee. There you will see him. Behold, I have told you. So they went quickly from the tomb with fear and great joy and ran to bring his disciples the word. Mm. Victory. Victory. This is a story of victory, overcoming victory. If you read victory in a, in a, a dictionary, it is just this. It's overcoming an enemy or an opponent, overcoming. And this is a victory. And I, I, as I read, read about this, I was, I was thinking about some of the greatest victories if you didn't know my story or our story, we were coaching in college soccer for many years, 30 years. So we experienced not only defeat, but many victories. And I thought in my head about victories, especially the ones that were most significant and influential. And when the last tick of the clock of, oh my goodness, hands up in the air, and running, running to celebrate, hugging, jumping with excitement, screaming and hollering. You could tell by what was happening. We won victory. 
just just recently we had the um, the the boys Johnny plays for Evangel. Um, Ben, who's also helping in the back, play for Evangel. They had this run in the state tournament to the semifinals. And we're, we're, the way it worked at Rupp Arena, they're playing Rupp Arena, they schedule games back to back to back so that you buy a ticket just for your game. So the game before has to clear out before you come in. And part of that is, well, it sometimes goes into overtime. So you're actually coming in while the other teams are coming out. There's a game before you that's going on. And don't you know, we didn't have to know the score by knowing which team won leaving. We knew which team was victorious. The, the team that had lost came and their head was down. They were complaining. What were they complaining about? Everything. The, the referees' calls, the opponents, some people on their team that didn't play well complaining, moaning, head down, and walking slow. Sad, frustrated. Run, their shoulders were slumped looking down. You could tell. Oh, but the team that won. Oh, they were coming out. And they had just about running. They were and had a step to them. Shoulders back, talking. And what were they talking about? All the testimony of their victory. You could tell their team had won. You could tell there was a victory by how they were acting. The demonstration of their body language. And listen, there, science has proved this. We're made in, in, a, in a, the image of God that, that, listen, they have shown this, that when we stand in victory, when, when we stand like that, our physiology changes that we're more joyful, we're more positive. That we tend to be more accomplishing in our lives. And when we stand cowering, head down, shoulder slump, we tend to be more negative just by our body position. Why is it so important that when we come in here, we praise the Lord? In, in, a, in a position of victory, of praising him, That's, that, that brings to us, this, it ushers in the spirit. The, the message being this, if this is a day of the greatest victory, in our lives and nothing even compares to it. Listen, we've had, we've had great victories. The last season, the last season at the University of Louisville, we win the ACC championship. One of the never done before in the history of, of Louisville soccer. One of the hardest things to do the whole trip home from North Carolina, the boys were carrying the trophy. They were wearing, wearing things that said we were champions. They were engaging other people, trying to tell them about the fact that we were victorious. If something so trivial gets us that excited. What about this victory? Should we not be jumping, praising, declaring, engaging people? Let me tell you about the victory. We should be walking in victory. Our lives should be a testimony of the victory. Because listen, there's no other contest. That's it. 
That's it. And we won. Jesus overcame death, sin, and the devil. And his victory is our victory. Yes. Yes. Ah, I just got this revelation. I think next Next Resurrection Sunday, I'm going to ask Pastor Bob that we all get shirts. We won. We won. That we all go out there on the same team saying, listen, we're victorious. We won. And then wear it during the day to have people ask you, what'd you win? Let me tell you. Let me tell you. And have a small trophy that we get to carry. You know what the trophy is going to be? It's going to be a stone. A stone. Because the stone that the devil meant to separate Jesus from the Father. The stone that the devil means to separate us from Jesus is the same stone that the angels were sitting on. It was the trophy that we get to carry with us as evidence of the victory. We need a stone to carry around. Let me tell you what happened with the shirt saying we won. Here's the trophy. We should be jumping excited we should walk in victory and people should know by how we're walking how we're talking how we're living our lives that we were on the winning team I'm going to just give you three today three I believe three steps that we could be taking. If we're not now, we need to be taking to walk in victory. That when we leave here, if we came in and we were a bit heavy, maybe walking like those, that, that group that was walking out feeling like they had lost. If we're walking like that in our lives, I'm going to give you three steps to change that so that when we leave here, we're walking differently in victory. And, and they, they actually correlate with the, the three things that the devil tried to use to keep Jesus in the tomb. The first was the Pharisees, the, the Pharisees unjustly brought Jesus before Pilate. In the, in the dark of the night, had the trial in the wee hours of the night, and then bring him to Pilate. And, and here's a word about Pilate. Pilate, after interviewing Jesus, brings him back out and says, I find nothing that this man has done wrong. Nothing. I can't convict him. But he did not resist the pressure from the high priests and the Pharisees. And listen, in our lives, what we don't resist, we comply with. He didn't want to take responsibility for the death of Jesus, but he also didn't resist it. And those things in life that we don't resist and we allow 
We tolerate. And we want to say, oh, but I didn't agree with. We are still agreeing with. Because we don't resist him. And he said, listen, I find nothing wrong, but you go ahead and do it. And unjustly, the perfect lamb, sinless, they not only beat him, but then walk him, crucify him. And then the Pharisees, the high priests, they say to Pilate, listen, this premature victory that they thought they had won, we want to ensure it. So let's make sure that guards are around there. Let's make sure there are guards. And what were the guards representing? The guards were representing this, that they wanted to hide and keep the truth in the cave. All the deception, all the lies that crucified Jesus and put him in the cave, they wanted to hide it. And the guards were there to guard against the truth. So the truth would not be exposed. Everything they did was a deceit. And isn't the same in our lives. That the devil is trying to, at every point, try to keep us from knowing the truth. If we want to walk in victory, we need to walk in truth. Even those, those victories that are won in deception, in lies, in manipulation, aren't really victories. It is only in truth. We need to walk in truth if we're going to walk in victory. And, and John, and, and listen, Satan infiltrates people. He infiltrates governments. He infiltrates churches to distort and hide the truth and deceive. We need to be discerning to know the truth. In, in John 9, there's a story. There's a story about uh, Jesus heals a man of blindness. And, and, and after he's healed, the, the Pharisees bring him in. They, they question him saying, who is this man and, and how did you, how, how were you healed? And, and this is what, what he says. He says, then they said to him again, what did he do to you? How did he open your eyes? He answered them, I told you already, and you did not listen. Why do you want to hear it again? Do you also want to be, uh, become his disciples? Then they reviled him and said, you are his disciple, but we are Moses' disciples. We know that God spoke to Moses as for this fellow. We do not know where he is from. The man answered and said to them, why is it a marvelous thing? Why this is a marvelous thing that you do not know where he is from. Yet he has opened my eyes. Now we know that God does not hear sinners, but if anyone is a worshiper of God and does his will, he hears him. Since the world began, it has been unheard that anyone opened the eyes of one that was born blind. If this man were not from God, he could do nothing. They answered and said to him, you are completely born in sins and you're teaching us. And they cast him out. They did not want to know the truth. And in our lives, listen, we are bombarded with whether it be news or social media or music or there are a bombardment of lies out there trying to deceive the truth. And the guards were put there at the tomb 
to keep the truth inside the tomb. Oh, but what happened? Jesus comes out and they were rendered mute and like dead people, silent and ineffective. In the presence of truth, in the presence of God, all lies are ineffective and mute. We need to walk in truth if we're going to walk in victory. The last days, it is said that people will call evil good and good evil. Followers will end up being deceived and deceive others. And who, who was up here saying this earlier? On, on Transgender Day of Visibility, we honor the extraordinary courage and contributions of tra transgender Americans and reaffirm the nation's commitment to forming a perfect union where people are created equal. This is coming from our president that they're declaring tomorrow. Tom tomorrow. This is coming from the White House. A day of transgender day of visibility tomorrow. Do you not think that there is a distortion of the truth of what we know to be true? We need to know the truth. To walk in victory, we need to know the truth, to know Jesus. To know Jesus is to know his word. To know his word is to obey his word. To obey his word is to walk in victory. Do not be conformed by the patterns and ways of this world. Do not be conformed. Do not be deceived by that which is not true. But be transformed by the renewing of your mind. And it says, so that we can prove what is the will of God. So that we can walk in victory. Don't be deceived so that you can walk in the truth and walk in victory. What people are in our lives? What, what people are in our lives that are trying to deceive us? Who, who are we hanging around? What music are we listening to? What are we reading? That if we're going to walk in victory, if we're going to walk in victory, we need to walk in the truth. We need to know the truth. We need to know Jesus. We need to know his word, and we need to obey it. The second, history tells us this, that the seal on the tomb were ropes that were drawn across the stone and attached on each side of the tomb. And right in the middle of where those ropes intersected, with wet clay, they would seal it. And, and not just put wet, wet clay, but it was stamped with a Roman seal. Listen, it was one thing to move the stone, which was a, a Herculean maybe move to be able to do it. It would take many people to move a stone that was that big that was covering the grave. But to move a stone that had the Roman seal on it when it's now a violation of Roman law, there was the seal on it that said, don't mess with the tomb. 
This is a final authority, an authenticity of a sealing of the tomb, saying it's off limits. And listen, if people broke the seal, whatever it might have been, a seal on anything, there was a great punishment that came with it. Satan desires to do the same thing in our lives. He wants to put his seal on us in the tomb. And the seal of what? Well, the seal of shame, the seal of guilt, the seal of fear, the seal of addiction, the seal of generational curses, the seal of lust, sexual perversion, pornography, whatever sins in the past, the devil wants to put his authority, his seal on us to make us believe that we have no right to break the seal. But Jesus being resurrected, Breaking the seal tells us that we have authority. That any seal that the devil tries to put on our life, we have the resurrection power flowing through us. That Jesus rising from the dead broke the seal and then handed the authority to you and I so that we don't have to live under the authority of Satan. We are free to live in victory. We need to live in authority that Jesus has given us, that we can lay our hands on the sick and they will be healed that we can cast out demons by the name of Jesus, that poverty can be broken by the economy of heaven, by giving first. He's given us authority in our lives, but we, if we want to walk in victory, we need to walk in in the authority that he has given us. The seal has been broken. We are free. We don't have to live under the seal of Satan. Yes, yes. So there's no need to walk with our shoulders slumped, with our eyes down, complaining about our circumstances and situation. No, we have authority. And here's, and I I implore you, especially in our words that he has given us the authority to speak into our lives and our children and family lives and each other words of life, words of hope, words of resurrection, that we have been given the authority, but when we partner with the devil, we now stamp on ourselves the seal that the devil wants to stamp on us. When our words align with death, 
destruction. Now we take the seal and we stamp it ourselves. Through our words, we need to take authority and speak promises, promises. I'm, I've mentioned, I mentioned weeks ago that um, I, I was re- I'm reading a book on the power of words, the power of our tongue. And it convicted me so much that I started writing in my journal daily and speaking the promises of God over my life and over my family's life. Everything that I find in the Bible that he has given us as a promise, I started writing it down and speaking it out. And oh my goodness, what a difference just in my life. What I'm expecting now, what I'm anticipating, what I'm looking for in life. Live in and walk in the authority. The last is this. Is the stone was there to separate us from the Father, us from Jesus, us from God. When the stone was rolled away, it took all of our sins. It now put, because of Jesus, us in intimate connection with the Father. If we're going to walk in victory, we need to walk in connection with the Father. Closely, intimately, submissively, that we need to lay down our lives, our agenda, our ways and walk in connection with the Father. But we have to be willing to step out of the tomb. Jesus, rising, resurrection, the stone was removed for all of us. The stone, the sins of our past erased, no longer to keep us separated from the Father. But we have to now walk in victory and we have to take the steps out of the tomb. We find ourselves sometimes in a place of comfort. Oh, this is the place we know. This is what we're used to. And and Lord, you haven't given me the future. I, I, I don't know what's next. So out of fear, we stay in rather than taking steps of just following the voice of the Lord and stepping out of the tomb, walking in victory in connection with the Father. Those three things As we leave here, no, as we run out of here in celebration, because victory is ours. Yes. We're going to have t-shirts next year. If not just for this service, we're going to have t-shirts. We won. We're on the winning team. Stone in our arms as the, as the, as the, the trophy. The stone is also the foundation that we stand on. That stone that was rolled away. That is the foundation of our faith. That that stone was rolled away. It was also what was used to crush the plans of the devil. A trophy, the foundation, and to crush the plans of the devil. The stone is rolled away. We're victorious. We are victorious. We are victorious. 
Go and walk in victory. Walk in truth, walk in authority, and walk hand in hand with the Father. Know Jesus as his son, because that is the way to the Father. Everybody go ahead and stand. I'll tell you what, come on, come on down. Take that journey down. Let's walk. Take that walk of victory down to the altar. If there's, if there's anybody here tonight that hasn't committed their life, made Jesus their Lord and Savior, if Tina and I and the congregation here can pray for you guys, is there anybody here tonight? We don't want to leave. We want everybody to be running out of here in victory. Cheering. Awesome. Anybody need prayers? Come, come forward. Um, for Melody's family and then me as well, because I'm still struggling. All right. Miss, Miss Melody Real um, lost her father. He, he passed on. He's with Jesus. What a man of God he was. He served him well on this earth. And um, what a, but we know Miss Melody's heart and loss. So, um, uh, Kaylee, can you come and, and pray, please? And everybody, let's gather around. Lord, I just thank you so much for Larry's life, Father. Lord, I pray that you would just fill Michaela's mind with visions of him dancing with you in heaven, yeah. Jesus. God, I pray that you would just... Give this family peace. I lift up Melody to you, Father. I pray that you would shower her in your peace. Lord, I thank you that you're the Prince of Peace, God. God, I pray that you would just be with them as they grieve this loss and that you would just remind them of what Larry has now gained in you, his reward, God. Lord, we just praise you and we thank you for the life that he had, God. I just remove all depression. I pray that the heaviness would be lifted off of those who are mourning his passing, God. I pray, Father, that you would just remind them of how you were so faithful to Larry and how you filled his life with wonderful things and wonderful opportunities. God, thank you for just being with them. Thank you for being with Melody and her girls now. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? Anybody else have any prayer needs? Well, praise the Lord. I also want you to just give a hand again to our worship team tonight. They did an awesome job. We so much appreciate you two guys. And John, was it John as well? John and to Ashlyn who came. And I don't know if Ashlyn's still here. She had to get going. But you guys were awesome. You did a great job. Really, uh, just, there's such an anointing on, on your lives. John, I don't know you as much, but, but an anointing on your lives that when you guys worship, when you sing, there is a, a, a I feel like a, a coming into the presence of God because of your genuine love. Yes, it is pure. So I thank you. Thank you for blessing us tonight. So there is going to be some food afterwards. We're going to um, go on a, a shout, as we always do, all right? One, two, three. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Happy Resurrection Day.